In the Bible, Jesus warns us that a very powerful demon spirit will be released in the end times from the spiritual prison called the abyss. Jesus says Satan gives this demon his throne. Satan's throne is in the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem, and the demon's throne is in the Kaaba in Mecca. Jesus said people all over the world will worship and pray to this demon spirit, thinking it is God. We now know this demon spirit is Baal, and Baal dwells in the Kaaba in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Baal cannot call down fire from heaven. The Kaaba collects every Islamic prayer from all over the world. When facing the Kaaba to pray, people believe they are praying to God, but they are not. They have been deceived. Jesus strongly warned us to not worship the beast called Baal and its Kaaba image that represent worship to a false god instead of Jesus. Jesus said anyone who worships or prays to this demon spirit would not have their name written in the book of eternal life. All who dwell on the earth will worship him. Everyone whose name has not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who has been slain. Listen to what Jesus just said about worshiping and praying to the beast. Islam falsely teaches Jesus is a messenger. Jesus is not just a messenger, but is the Son of God. Jesus has risen from the dead. Jesus said he is returning soon. Repent and prepare for his second coming. The Bible calls this demon spirit the beast. It is a mystery to most people today that the beast has come up out of the abyss. The Bible tells us this will happen. The beast that you saw was, and is not, and is about to come up out of the abyss and go to destruction. The demon Baal was powerful during the time of Babylon. Many people sacrificed their children to Baal. The night Babylon fell, God sent Baal into the abyss, and now it is out of the abyss and active once again. Baal is the Hebrew name, and the Bible also calls this demon Bel in Aramaic. Today, the false god Baal is worshipped in the Kaaba after Satan gave his throne to him. In the year 624, Islamic prayer was changed from Satan's throne in Jerusalem to the Kaaba in Mecca. Pretending to be the real god, Baal receives all Islamic prayer. Just like Satan, Baal is a fallen angel. We know that long ago in the Old Testament, Baal was first worshipped by Israelites, Canaanites, and the Babylonians. The Bible tells us Baal was worshipped. He served and worshipped Baal and aroused the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel. Then after Babylon fell in 538 BC, Baal seemed to disappear when Baal was trapped in the abyss, also called Sheol. It seemed Baal was dead. The ancient symbol of Baal is the half-moon crescent, which is also the universal symbol of Islam. We see the half-moon symbols of Baal all over the Islamic world today. Pray that they will learn the truth of Jesus and stop praying to Baal in the Kaaba. We first can understand what happened to Baal or Bel from the handwriting on the wall story in the book of Daniel. The last king of Babylon was Belshazzar, whose name literally means Bel guards the king. This means the demonic spirit Baal was guarding the king that night. Daniel told Belshazzar what the words meanie, meanie, tekel, parson meant. Here is what these words mean. Meany. God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. Tekel. You have been weighed on the scales and found wanting. Parson. Your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. That very night, Belshazzar, king of the Babylonians, was slain and Darius the Mede took over the kingdom 
at the age of 62. At the same time that King Belshazzar was killed as the Medes and Persians defeated Babylon, God placed Bel, also called Baal, in the spiritual abyss that night. God punished this demon when he said, I will punish Bel in Babylon, and I will make what he has swallowed come out of his mouth. We know Baal was placed in the spiritual prison when God thrust Baal into Sheol. Nevertheless, you will be thrust down to Sheol, to the recesses of the pit. When Babylon fell in 538 BC to the Persians, the false god of Babylon called Baal, or Bel, was sent into the abyss by the true god. Once in the abyss, it certainly appeared that Baal was dead forever with a fatal wound. But Baal's seemingly fatal wound was later healed when Baal was allowed to leave the abyss. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The Bible says the false prophet used great signs to deceive many into worshiping the beast. Muhammad is the false prophet. After deceiving the people, Muhammad told them to pray towards the Kaaba, which is where Baal the beast dwells. One of Muhammad's signs was the deception that he had the power to cause fire to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of the people. This clever deception story is written in the Quran, and it performed great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of the people. Because of the signs it was given power to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived the inhabitants of the earth. The Quran says Muhammad was asked to give a sign by calling down fire from heaven on an offering in view of those around him. Exactly as Revelation prophecy warned us, we can see that Muhammad is the false prophet. But we also know from the Bible that Baal cannot really bring fire from heaven. Only God has this power. This means Muhammad must deceive the people into believing Muhammad can call down fire from heaven. Elijah summoned the followers and prophets of Baal to Mount Carmel and told them to call on Baal to bring down fire from heaven onto an altar sacrifice. When the fire did not appear, Elijah then taunted Baal and his prophets. The Bible tells us the prophet Elijah proved Baal was not God because only the true God was able to bring down fire from heaven. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Shout louder, he said. Surely he is a God. Perhaps he is deep in thought, or busy, or traveling. Maybe he is sleeping and must be awakened. This continued all morning and afternoon and there was no response from Baal. Then Elijah prepared an altar with an offering to God and drenched it with water three times before he called on the Lord while Baal's followers watched. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil and also licked up the water in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Baal was humiliated for his inability to bring fire from heaven to the offering. Baal's prophets were killed. Then Elijah commanded them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Don't let anyone get away. They seized them and Elijah had them brought down to the Kishon Valley and slaughtered there. In Revelation, God knows Baal cannot deliver fire for Muhammad. Elijah at Mount Carmel in 1 Kings proved Baal cannot deliver fire from heaven. Satan has read the entire Bible, including the book of Revelation and 1 Kings. After release from the abyss, Baal still cannot bring fire down for Muhammad. Satan knows this request to bring fire from heaven is impossible for Baal and might even get his prophet Muhammad killed. 
yet Satan deceives those around Muhammad to believe it could be done. Satan is very clever in his deceptions. Knowing that only God can deliver fire, Satan cleverly creates a deceptive story to avoid a second fire from heaven failure. This is in the Quran in chapter 3. Satan's story allows Muhammad and those around him to believe he could give a sign to call down fire from heaven in their view. This story prevents another repeat of Baal's failure and the death of his prophet Muhammad. Those around Muhammad are tricked into believing he can do this sign if he just asks. But he does not ask. In the Quran, Allah does not tell Muhammad to call down fire from heaven on an offering, just like in the days of Elijah, even when Muhammad is challenged by the people around him to do this very thing. In Islam, a prophet is called a messenger. The Quran says Muhammad and Elijah are both messengers, but Muhammad is considered the greatest messenger in Islam. Muhammad is the last prophet in Islam. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and those with him are forceful against the unbelievers. As a messenger of Allah, Muhammad naturally thinks he has been given the same powers from Allah as Elijah the messenger. Muhammad believes he can bring fire from heaven since Elijah already did it. But Allah does not instruct Muhammad to call down fire from heaven. There are those who said, indeed, Allah has taken our promise not to believe any messenger until he brings us an offering which fire from heaven will consume. Muhammad say, there have already come to you messengers before me with clear proofs, and even that of which you speak. This phrase in the Quran, not to believe any messenger until he brings us an offering which fire from heaven will consume, is referring to the Elijah and Baal fire from heaven event in the Bible. The phrase, messengers before me with clear proofs, and even that of which you speak, means the clear proof sign of fire from heaven could also be given by Muhammad the messenger if he asked. This fulfills the revelation prophecy about the false prophet's deception. Then if they deny you, O Muhammad, so were messengers denied before you. And they say, Why has a sign not been sent down to him from his Lord? Muhammad say, Indeed, Allah is able to send down a sign, but most of them do not know. In these two Quran verses, Allah says that if they didn't believe the messenger Elijah's sign, neither will they believe the messenger Muhammad's sign. But the people did believe Elijah. Allah also says he is able to send a sign if he chooses. So the Quran does not tell Muhammad to produce the fire from heaven sign, even though Allah said he could produce a sign for Muhammad. Satan is lying again here, and the Quran is wrong here as well, because the people did believe Elijah, and the Bible says they worship the true God instead of Baal. The Bible tells us Satan will transfer his throne to the beast. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. Satan's throne is on Mount Moriah in the Dome of the Rock on the outer court of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Baal's throne is in the Kaaba. It seems strange that Satan, who desires to be like God and be worshipped, would transfer his throne to the beast. Yet we know this happened because the Bible says it did. Satan's throne transfer occurred in 624 AD as Islamic prayer direction was transferred from Jerusalem's Temple Mount to the Kaaba in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. The mandatory prayer to Jerusalem began shortly after Muhammad's night journey from Mecca to the Temple Mount and back again in one night, the night journey. Then, almost inexplicably, Allah in the Quran suddenly changed his mind and then directed Muhammad to turn his face and pray towards the Kaaba. This is when Satan's throne was transferred to Baal the beast. Now, 
turn your face in the direction of the sacred mosque Kaaba and, O Muslims, wherever you are, turn your faces in its direction. The prayer direction has remained towards Baal's throne dwelling in the Kaaba ever since that day in 624 AD. This message is about the truth of Jesus. The Bible says Jesus is the Son of God. If you are a Muslim, the truth of Jesus is different from what you were taught, but you must know the truth. The Islamic Quran says Jesus is not God, but just a prophet. The Bible says Jesus was crucified for our sins and rose to life on the third day. Muslims are told this did not happen. The Bible says the only path to God and eternal life is through Jesus. The Quran says that is not true. Because of these and many other differences, only the Bible is true. No Muslim can know his or her eternal destiny in this life. According to the Quran, even Muhammad himself was unsure of his fate after death. I am no new thing among the messengers of Allah, nor do I know what will be done with me or with you. But the Bible tells us what happened to Muhammad. The Bible tells us the false prophet and the demonic beast will be thrown into the lake of fire when Jesus returns. But the beast was captured and with it the false prophet who had performed the signs on its behalf. With these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. In the Bible, Jesus gave us these and other warnings about Islam many hundreds of years before they came into use for Islamic worship. The Bible is the true word of God. Anyone who takes the Shahada mark or worships and prays to the Kaaba image will not enter heaven. And the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. There will be no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and its image or for anyone who receives the mark of its name. The Bible says Jesus is the Son of God. The Bible says Jesus was crucified for our sins and rose to life on the third day. The Bible warns against worship and prayer to the beast and its image. Pray for every Muslim who takes the mark and worships the image that they will learn the truth of Jesus. Jesus is not a prophet. Jesus is the Son of God and he was raised from the dead. Jesus is returning soon. To learn more about Islam and Bible prophecy, see our website at www.revelationnow.org.